Welcome to Learning Math with Mr. Tan. So today we're talking about linear sequences and in linear sequences the difference between consecutive terms are a constant. So the common difference between consecutive terms for this sequence is a constant of 3. Alright, so this is what we call a linear sequence. Now some people have heard of this term arithmetic progression. It refers to the same thing. Um, some people refer to it as sequence with a common difference, not different as well. Uh, this is the general form which we will be exploring later on and we will be seeing how this comes about, how to apply it as well as an alternative form which you may choose not to look at but it's, I feel it's quite easy to do in case you forget this uh, formula. So before I go into the formulation of this formula and explaining what individual things in this formula mean which I have already written down, but how do you use it? We'll go into that later on. But let me just go through some terminology so we're familiar, all right? So I've written here this, all right? We have uh, this first term, all right? This first term is two, okay? T1 means the first term. So T2 is the second term. So T1, first term is two. So what happens with this n equals 1? You can think of it as like a position in the sequence. So this refers to like the first position I have, the first term t1, and t1 happens to be equal to 2. So likewise, in the second position, I have t2, and t2 equals to 5. Third position, I have t3, and t3 is Eight. So you can think of this as a position, think of this like an object in that position, okay? And you happen to know what that object is, which is actually a number, okay? So the fourth position, I have T4 and it happens to be 11. The fifth position, I have T5 and it happens to be 14. Alright, so after we have, have understood this, we can now go into the formulation of the general form. So we'll now try to understand this formula a little bit better. So in this process of formulation, I actually written down each of these terms vertically down. All right, and later on, I'm going to draw a relationship with the end. Um, like I mentioned, in the first position, T1 equals to two. Second position, the term occupying it, T2 equals to five, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to decompose each of this term into the first term, all right, plus something else, okay? So for the first term, there's nothing else for me to add. However, for the second term, term onwards, all right, I can actually take two plus three equals to five, okay? And in the same manner, I can actually add another three to get the subsequent term. So two plus three carries on. So from the previous term of two plus three, I add another Three. So 2 plus 3 plus 3 is going to give me 8. Same thing, 2 plus 3 plus 3 is from the previous term over here. Carry it down. And then I plus another 3, I get 11. Now to proceed from here, what I'm going to do is to count the number of times that 3 appears. Okay, so here, of course, there's, there's 0. Alright, so... Um, I'm going to start from here first. 2 plus 1 times of 3. All right. This is 2 plus 2 times of 3. And then here, 2 plus 3 times of 3. Okay. So here, I have 2 plus 0 times of 3. Now that I understand this sort of uh, unofficial format, how this is being written. Okay. So I notice that Let's draw this vertically down. Over here is consistently this 2 plus. And over here, consistently, it is the common difference of 3. All right? And I have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So here, we try to check first. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 indeed is 14. So this pattern seems to hold up. Uh, and pretty well in the, by the time you reach the fifth term. So I'm going to try to generalize this. So in general, it seems that this represents the first term A. 
all right and then plus something times of the difference b okay so of course you know that is n minus one so how is it n minus one so let's observe a certain pattern notice that when it is this n equals to two it is one n equals to three it is two n equals to four it is three n equals to 5, it is 4. n equals to 1, it is 0. So notice that this number in this column consistently lags behind the n by 1. Or in very mathematical term, this is consistently 1 less than n. So if it's 1 less than n, so I put an n minus 1. So that gives us the general form of Tn equals to a plus n minus 1 times of D. So that's the arithmetic progression form and this is how it comes about. Okay, so in the next part, I'm going to take you through how to apply this to find a general term that is specific for this sequence. So I'm going to write this down here. All right. So of course, uh, without, without saying much, actually, you should know that this is not expected for all your questions. So what is required of you for example, if they were to say find the n term of the following sequence, all right. So if the question asks you to find the n term of the following sequence or the general term of this following sequence, what you need to do is. First of all, observe that the difference between consecutive terms and notice I keep mentioning this word consecutive, it has to be consecutive. You cannot compare across uh, terms, you cannot compare like T1 with T3, then it does not make sense. You can't like pick whichever term to compare. So the consecutive terms, if the difference is a constant number, then you can apply this formula. So what you do is, because as I mentioned, a represents the first term, so you're going to pick this, place it here, plus, like I mentioned, the formula uh, has to be in uh, terms of n, all right, because it's Tn, so that if you are looking, for example, for T of 107, which is the 107th term, then you have something for you to substitute the 107th in, which is this n over here. So I'm going to leave it there because this is talking about the nth term, uh, nothing in particular yet. So times 3. So what you need to do is to simplify this expression on the right hand side. So 2 plus by distributive property, you multiply the 3 with the n, you get 3n. You multiply the 3 with negative 1, you get negative 3. All right, and what you have left is 3n plus 2 minus 3 will be minus 1. So Tn, all right, is this simple formula in the end of 3n minus 1. Okay, I'm going to show to you why is it called a linear sequence before we explore a decreasing sequence. So previously, we have looked at this arithmetic progression form and how do you apply it. Now, I'm going to introduce you uh, an alternative form in case you forget this. All right, you can always fall back on this. Now, I mentioned that this is called a linear sequence and you know how a linear expression looks like. So a linear expression looks like AX plus B, for example. Okay, but in this case, we're talking in terms of N, so therefore our variable becomes N. So therefore it becomes a n plus b and I'm going to call it the linear form. And by substituting certain terms, we are able to solve for what is a and what is b. So my objective is still to look for what these two are. Just like in the case of, let's say, a linear graph, um, it's in terms of y equals to mx plus c, you're looking for the m, you're looking for the c, so that you can substitute in these two numbers and then you have a proper equation for the graph that you're drawing. So here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to substitute just two terms. In just two terms, I'll, I'll, I'll be done with this. Okay, in fact, uh, just to mention, all right, uh, 
there is this quadratic sequence that is going to be in the form of a n square plus b n plus c and therefore this kind of uh, general form actually makes sense with relation to what uh, it looks like in the end. So what it looks like in the end is actually a linear expression on the right hand side. So that's why it's called linear sequence and therefore general form is also a linear expression. Okay, so quadratic as well has its own version. So I'm not going to talk about that in this video. I'm just going to focus on linear. Okay, so I'm going to just need two terms. Uh, T1, all right, equals to two. T2 equals to five. I'm going to choose these two simply because they are the smallest in number. Okay, so it's a lot easier for us to work with. And and here, I do not know yet what is the a, so I'm going to use a, and actually it's 1, okay, so n is 1, then I also don't know what is b, I'm going to find that out. Next, I again don't know what is a, but this time n equals to 2, plus b. So in fact, if you actually stay with this approach, you generally can memorize this, all right? Because if you just take the first two terms, what you're going to sub in for the n is 1 and 2. So you're always, always going to get a plus b, 2a plus b. What matters is you only substitute in what is the term number. So let's start from scratch, okay? And it's going to be the same thing, just that I'm, I'm trying to show to you how to make this more efficient. So we know that this is the general form for linear expression. So I know that it is going to be a plus b because I substitute in n equals to one, it's still going to be a, all right? And this first term is two. Second term, all right, I substitute in n equals to two, it's going to give me two a plus b. I still don't know what is b. So the second term is 5. So now we have a system of two equations with two unknowns that I need to solve. This is equation 1, equation 2. Okay, so I'm going to take the simplest approach. Uh, if you have not gone through what is simultaneous equation, actually you can just skip this part. Otherwise, if you learn it, then this might make sense to you. So equation 2 minus equation 1, what I'm going to get is b minus b, no more. Okay, so 2a minus a is going to be 5 minus 2. Okay, so a equals to 3. And then if I were to substitute in a equals to 3 in 2, I'm going to solve for b. So substitute into equation 1. Then 3 plus b equals to 2. b equals to 2 minus 3 is going to give me negative one. So if I was to substitute back this a equals to 3, b equals to negative 1, back into the linear form, what we'll get is tn equals to a is 3, n plus b, which is plus negative 1, so I have minus 1. So notice that in the end, I actually get the same general form. Okay, so this is just showing to you that you can use this as a backup plan in case you've forgotten the AP form, all right, which uh, a lot of students actually either forget this or write down the wrong formula. Okay, so this is quite foolproof. You probably would know by the time you're studying for exam what are linear expressions and you can just substitute in certain values to find find out the A and the B, substitute in, you get the general form. So it's up to you which method you like. Um, I don't think a lot of people does it like this. Most people just do it like this, but it's good to know more things, all right? So the next example, we'll be looking at a decreasing sequence. And in this example, we start from 100 to 96, 92, and 88. So it is a constant drop of four. All right, so the difference is still common difference. However, in here, we write a common difference as negative four to indicate that it is decreasing, all right, between the consecutive terms. So let's look at how to do it. I'm gonna use the AP form 
Um, should you choose to prefer the linear expression form, it's up to you. You can work things out and see whether you get the same thing as me. Or even if you prefer the AB form, it might be good for you to gain a little bit of exposure by working things out in linear form alongside with me and check your answer. Alright, so Tn equals to A plus N minus 1 times of D. So we're going to substitute in these values. So the first term is 100 plus n minus 1 times of negative 4. So all you need to do is to simplify this. Just take note, um, this is an area for a common mistake. So you might forget the negative. Uh, you will get an entirely different result, of course. And that will actually be for an increasing sequence, but that's a different thing altogether. But do remember if it's decreasing, your differences will be negative. If it's increasing sequence, then your difference is positive. Alright, so here what we're going to do is to simplify things and negative 4 multiplied with n is going to give you minus 4 n here. Negative 4 multiplied with negative 1 here plus 4 so simplify it I have 104 minus 4 n okay so this is a really really very simple approach to finding the general term for a decreasing sequence so without this formula I think it might be a little bit difficult but with this formula I guess it's quite easy once you understood what to substitute in for the D, what to substitute in for the A, as well as taking care of the negative sign because it's a decreasing sequence. Okay, so um, I hope you can try to do this formulation of the general form using the linear expression way as a practice in simultaneous equation as well. Thank you for watching this video. If you feel that this video has helped you, please give me a like. If you feel that my channel is helping your mathematics, please subscribe to my channel and tell your friends about this channel. Thank you for watching.